Okay, greetings, family. Uh, thank you for your patience. We were having some crazy, crazy techno, strange things was happening with this platform tonight. I mean, bags were uh, teleporting. <laughs> anyway, we're going to do our opening with starting with Baraka and get right into the show. You're in for a treat tonight. So you get your pens, pencils, papers, everything ready. Because mm -hmm. here we go with our brother Baraka by way of Harlem. magician, the lover in you. Every single day, we are called to walk in our purpose. Answer the call. Lay down your burden and anything that holds you back and take your rightful place. The battle is everywhere. It's right in your face. Let's go. Okay, is my sound good, Miss Bliss? Yes, All it's right. good. Okay, uh, family, I want to thank you for showing up tonight. This is going to be an incredible show of how to change your period, how to change your apartment to a pyramid complex, how to transmutate your phone. And I'm so honored to have our Jedi researcher, longtime student of crystals, pyramids to be with us for the first time on youtube channel lester lovin so i want to congratulate you lester lovin and thank you for being here uh, we're going to do an opening and then we're going right into it so without further ado family take hold of your crystals your pyramids your orgone and let us do the opening invocation i am in me i am in you the listening audience now and in the future we individually and collectively call upon our divinity and the guidance of our ascendant master big brothers and sisters to be with us tonight to guide the word so that we may elevate hope success strategies innovation to make man all our dreams that are most important to us. So, as I always say, you know, we have had many sentences, pages, and paragraphs and chapters of incarnations. And some of them we've been graced with amnesia. So, with that being said, yes, I am forgiving all previous lifetimes, the souls in previous lifetimes. And I ask all souls to please forgive me. I am forgiving all souls in this life. And I ask all souls in this life to please forgive me. And I ask in the name of love, we ask collectively. 
as wave particles of light in the stream of cosmic love. Melchizedek, Yahshua, Black Madonna, Mother Mary, Imhotep, Patahotep, Akhenaten, be with us. Aset, Heteru, be with us tonight. Asar, who lives in the acacia tree, be with us, please. Call upon Sheikh Amadou Bamba, Simeon Toko, Saint Germain, keeper of Mount Shasta into the hollow of the earth. Call upon Nikolai Tesla, Wilhelm Reich. Call on the Shroom Masters, Dr. Sabi, Shroom Master Kalindi Ayi, Shroom Master Dr. George Washington Carver. Call upon a Shroom Master spirit that worked with Harriet Tubman, Mary McLeod Bethune. Call on P.B. Randolph. We call on Enoch the Ethiopian who ascended into the heavens and became Metatron. We ask that Archangel Mikael protect all our family as we walk into spring. Protect all our family members, our brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, children, aunties, uncles, grandparents, all our relatives. Be protected by Archangel Mikael starting now. We ask the Crystal Kingdom to be present in this show and guide the word spoken. The pyramid complex throughout the earth. We ask for ignition, activation, and quantum inubriation into this show, into this platform. We ask in the name of love, Angel of Healing, Archangel Raphael, be with us, Archangel Gabriel. Angel of Enlightenment and Knowledge, Archangel Uriel, be with us. Call on the Buddhas, the Krishnas. Call on all the Ascended Masters, Kutumi, Seraphis Bay. Call on Kuan Yin, Lakshmi, to be with us. We call on White Buffalo Calf Woman. We call upon Quetzalcoatl. We call on Great Divine Director, Master Himalaya, Ascended Masters of Atlantis, Ascended Masters of Lemuria, be with us. And surround and protect. We ask for divine intervention upon this planet of all the cross-eyed school bus leaders, world leaders, known and unknown, human and non-human. We ask for galactic intervention into the consciousness of who's steering mass consciousness. We ask that the ascended masters step into the consciousness of media leaders, known and unknown, so that we can have a beautiful ride on spaceship planet Earth as she glides through the electronic, electronic, orgasmic sea of love, along with all the other planets, stars and nebulas and suns. When we ask that all the healers throughout the world um, in their various areas of specialty to align with love supreme and love's wisdom divine to make the world a better place one moment at a time. And we say it together, Ashe, Aho, Donada, Wado, Mahalo, Sheshe, Amen, Amen. And here we go. All right. So thank you, Miss Bliss, for showing up tonight. Uh, You're welcome. We always benefit from the feminine presence. Uh, we have next, I mean, tomorrow, family, we have a, a guest of Nit Yama and a brother Oye who's going to be dropping some technology and I got to upload the video. Excuse me, my nose was just itching. I got to turn up the filter. I'm allergic to my own kitty cats, y'all. I don't want, I don't say that often, but you know, I got to keep HEPA filters going. You know, I love them too much. So they got me turned out emotionally and I sometimes suffer nasally. So uh, without further ado, Lester, you ready? Let's make it happen, brother. Welcome to Magnificent. All righty. Uh, uh -oh. Feedback, Jimmy Hendrix on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, family, Lester is the one who had me 
triangulate all the corners of my room, work room, bedroom, office, bathroom, kitchen. What's the importance, Lester, of changing from a blockhead square room to one that's triangulated? What, what's the impact of being up with all these 90 degree corners that's not transformed? Uh, of course, there's many ways I could answer that, but um, the net result is the healthy environment for all life is having 70% negative ions and 30% positive ions, which is what we experience when we're outside by the ocean, waterfalls, lakes, ponds, forests. Uh, unfortunately, when we come into these environments that not only have 90 degree corners, but also have other positive ion generating devices, such as our refrigerators, our TVs, computers, um, the ratio is 30-70. So in answering the question more fully, there's been plenty of research done for quite a few years on when we have an, an abundance of negative ions in our house, an abundance of positive ions in our house. And the results are pretty much opposite. When we have more negative ions, the rate of our digestion is quicker. We are calmer emotionally. Our nervous system is more relaxed. We have clearer thinking. Negative ions destroy smoke, dust, and pollen. So we're not inhaling all of those particulates that come from the automobiles and the chimneys. Oh, yeah, and the sheetrock in our house. Wow. Okay. Um, in addition to that is the connection with Dr. Francis Quest Wellsling. Uh, Wellsling, in terms of the effect of the positive effect that negative ions have on melanin. The opposite or the complement to that is um, when we have an excess of positive ions which it slows down our digestion. Um, our emotions are quicker to go to the angry side. Um, we are not calm. It attracts smoke, dust, and pollen. And as, as Dr. Welsing told us, until we achieve an environment that has 70% negative to 30% positive ions, our melanin is not fully functional. Most people think, you know, uh, oh yeah, well, you know, the darker our skin, the more effective it is. It's the environment that feeds the potential that we have. And I'm hoping tonight to just go a little bit deeper into how all that works. Okay. Now, now you're getting deep. Uh, I ain't got a shovel yet, bro. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, when I was working at City Hall, Lester. Yes, sir. Uh, Glitch, you can hear me? Okay. All right. Let me un unmute Bliss because I was just, uh, mm -hmm. we, we having a little bit of a challenge. Bliss, you can hear me? Can yes, I can hear you. Yes. Okay. City Hall don't have any square corners here in New York City. When I was working at HVAC, City Hall had round doorways in the basement, rounded out corners. And I'm not talking about cardboard. I'm talking about plaster. It was rounded off every room. And it's, the mayor's office was 20 feet high, and there was no 90-degree corners in the rooms. And what I'm wondering, Lester, is melanin, can it, melanin become toxic by seven-foot ceilings with 30, 90-degree angles that they have in the projects? And if it does become toxic, how can we remedy to make the projects a pyramid complex? Well, first of all, my brother, you know, to quote from the master, George Clinton, funk not only moves, it can remove. Okay. <laughs> we don't deal with a state. We deal with a transition from one phase into another phase. But I want to address what you said. I want to address what you said in terms of City Hall. It was around the turn of the 19th into the 20th century at the time when they had the industrial giants, Carnegie, DuPont, Mellon, 
Rockefeller. Uh, any of these names familiar to you? Yes. Uh, all the all the industrial giants. You know the people that we now call um, robber barons, as well. I'm not judging anybody. I'm just saying that they had enough capital, and they built all their mansions along Fifth Avenue. And at one point, like anyone that has more than they could ever use, they got paranoid and <laughs> and hired a French architect and said, is there any way or what is the best way that we can maintain our wealth? Hmm. And homeboy went off. He was from France, so he got on the boat you know, they didn't planes then. He got on the boat and he went back to France and he spent two years and he triangulated and quadrupled and did all of his science and research and whatnot. And he came back and met with all these super rich people. And he said, the answer is very simple. He said, and you first of all must design your home so that when you open the front door, there's a wide expanse and people must see a staircase that goes up all the way to the second floor. It better if they have it on both sides. Does any of this sound familiar to anybody? Yes. Okay. Yes. And he said, and he said, so when you enter the house, there has to be a great expanse. And he said, the rooms have to be larger than are functional. And the reason for that is every time you enter those rooms, your consciousness can expand. Wow. Um, and he gave several other tips, including the fact that, um, and um, for those people who are into architecture or the history of it, um, around the turn of the century, or even uh, hundreds of years ago, they used to put supporting brackets to hold up the marble or the stone in the church in those corners. And those things were called pendentives. And they're all triangulated just like the stuff that Hank is talking about and that I make. The point being that it's been known for several centuries that having those corners not be 90 degrees will allow the negative ions, which is water, to keep moving and keep flowing. Wow. So why do they... Uh... No, no, I'm not done with the story. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay, so um, he went back. He reported this to these multimillionaires. And, of course, they got they got quick and busy, and they started design and built all their mansions. And, of course, they followed his template. And within five or six years, um, they got even more ideas for making money. And, boom, things were good. So they summoned him back. Now they had a different and, and a, a challenging question. And they said, well, making this, you know, making our shapes for our home and doing all these things, that's great. But now that we have all these factories and all these fields and all this, you know, industrial stuff, we need places for our workers to live. Uh -huh. and, and homeboy went back, but he came back much quicker this time. He came back within six months. And he said, well, that's easy. You know, what you must do is you must make a bunch of housing and it all has to have the same low ceilings and it all must face the factory. He said, the lower the ceiling, the less the expansion of, of thoughts and consciousness. And so every time they look out that window, they're not only thinking, I need to go work at the factory, but they're saying to their son or daughter, one day you'll be able to replace me and have a factory job. Wow. Uh oh, we've been duped. Duped, double duped, triple duped. Okay, somebody wants to paraphrase someone. Okay, and so we see that the environment and the shape of the environment that we live in um, can have a great effect. Now, it's, I would be pimping, I would be strolling and pimping if I said it's just a shape. Because then all kinds of people say, well, you know, I could have been a millionaire, but I lived in a square box. No, funk you. Okay. It has to do with the fact that we have so many things in our lifestyle, environment, and, you know, that we live in that also generate these positive ions. 
Number one, television set. Mm. Field goes 50 feet. And positive ions, which it generates, go right through matter. Negative ions normally don't go through matter. Hmm. So if your neighbor has a TV and it's facing your house, even if it's from across the street. Wow. Most streets are not 50 feet. So those 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 frequencies are going in. Um, and of course, you know, we're fond nowadays of having more than one TV in our house. Yo, next door okay. neighbors got a big screen TV <coughs> facing my this room. I could never sleep in it. Uh, uh huh. Okay, number I never sleep in it. Number two, and how I got into this information to begin with is computer. Okay, I got into this information because I took a computer course back in 1974, and within a couple of days, I realized I could not sit and function around this environment. Now, of course, we're talking about big clunky computers, and we were all we were all sitting under a row of 12 feet of fluorescent lights, which also produced the positive ions. And I just went investigating to find out why it had this effect on me and why I'm speaking to you now is because I learned all this stuff for the last 40 years. Mm. So, so this TV, computer, uh, refrigerator has a host of positive ions problems, fluorescent lights, and then finally the 90 degree corners also generate positive ions. So even if we have a, 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 a negative ion generator or an ionic breeze or any of those things, um, a great deal of that stuff, you know, even, you know, even our um, sage and all the things, sage, when you burn sage, you're, you're generating negative ions. So uh, once again, I'm getting ahead of myself because I have to explain what ions are. Mm. Normally when you go to college or high school, it's explained that ions um, are a, a chemical reaction between two different molecules. And while that is true, what I'm talking about is something more basic than that. And that is uh, when water molecules separate and come back together. When water molecules separate and come back together, when they separate, they form two different structures. One is a positive ion which is hydrogen and hydrogen atoms. And the, uh, and the other is um, uh, hydroxyl, which is oxygen and hydrogen. And that's the, your negative ion. So basically what we're talking about is the movement of water, the faster it moves, the less pollution the water has, um, and the more it's circulating and the manner in which it's circulating, the more negative ions it will generate. Unfortunately, the shapes that we live in and the and the and the machines that we live with are overpowering the natural circulation of water. And there's one more thing I should add, and that is we have when we talk about negative ion generation, as I started off with, you got the ocean, you got the rivers, you got you know all this stuff. But the key to it is is that it's outside. And therefore, we got to talk about the atmospheric gradient. Huh. What the hell is that? Yeah, what's that? Oh, well, it's the fact that, you know, when we're sitting on the ground and we're on our Buddha stage and we're all blissed out and whatever, where our booty is, okay, is about zero volts. Wow. Okay. But as soon as I get to my shoulders, it's about 100 volts. And every, you know, every couple of feet, we get more voltage. So we start off at zero, and by the time we get into the uh, into the atmosphere, the ionosphere, and the um, the mes uh, not the mesosphere, the exosphere, we've built up a, we've built up a column of energy that's now fifty thousand volts, and mm -hmm. therefore that's the missing thing. The outside voltage keeps the electrons and the water molecules moving. And as soon as we enter into these 90 degree corners, we know this. We walk across the rug and we touch that doorknob and the sparks come out because that's those are the dormant um, hydrogen uh, uh, atoms that I was talking about in the other positive ions. Wow. So the key to the triangles is understanding how can I replicate the big buzzword in our community these days is bio energy, biomimicry, 
How do we learn from nature? So how do we learn from nature and learn how to copy what she does in order to keep the electrons in our house moving? That's yeah. that's the answer. All right. So how we because how, I'm thinking uh people who want to pay all those millions of dollars for those high rises in Manhattan. Uh, what's the reason for them wanting to be like damn near flying in a in a giant building that has high rise and pyramids? Why do they put pyramids up on top of their those uh, structures? Like, what's up with that? Uh Kimasabi, Obi Wan. Okay, the higher up we go, the greater the voltage potential. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that again. The high, the, you know, like like right now we're on the sixth floor, so we're probably at a thousand volts. Okay. But if we're up in those high rises, then you're getting several, you're getting, you know, you're getting way more voltage. Wow. And, wow. and, and therefore the greater the potential um, for you get the electricity that keeps things moving. Like yogis in the mountain and stuff, huh? Well, that, that's, a known, that's a known phenomenon that the higher up you go in the mountain, Okay, the less oxygen you have, but the greater the voltage. That's why the ashrams are up there. That's why the, you know. That's you know. That's why the yogi one. Yeah, that's why people who sacrifice to go up to the top of the mountain. The other point, of course, is that negative ions, by their very nature, are attracted to tips, mm. to points, and so therefore, the most negative ions are going to be. You know, they're going to be going up, going up, going up, and accumulating at the top of that mountain. Or on points. Or on points. I'm thinking and of the sisters. They got mounds, rounds, and points. You better. What you think about that, Miss Bliss? <laughs> pow, 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 pow. Well, no, 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 no. It, 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 it's it, it, first of all, you're quoting from one of the most basic tenets in physics, which is the more curvilinear anything is, the greater its ability to take in and let off energy. Uh oh, donk a donk. That is deep. Say it again, please. The, the more curvilinear either a body or a system is, the greater is its capacity to take in and let off energy. Hey, that brings a whole nother meaning to the to the term. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> well, I'm just I, I, I'm just pointing out the fact that. When we watch those specials on National Geographic or David Attenberg, you know, Earth, and they always show the Himalayas. And usually they show the Himalayas in terms of the geese flying over. We should tell us something that the bird is higher than the biggest mountain in the world. Okay. How's it doing that? Okay. And, but as they show the mountain, on one side of the mountain, there is nothing, bro. But as soon as you see where the wind is blowing, as soon as it blows past that point, clouds are precipitated. Yeah, I've seen that. Before. Those are the negative ions joining back with the positive ions to form the water molecule. Whoa. So when we have the triangles up in our corner, when we have the triangles up in our corner, each of those triangles have three points. <laughs> and everywhere that we have a point, get to the point, brother, Everywhere that we have a point, we're accumulating negative ions that can convert the positives back into something we can use. Mm -hmm. So, silly Negro that I am, I made my triangle so that they, they got one, two, three, four. So each of these layers, oh, that, three, six, before. nine, 12 points. The more points, the more busy we can get, yo. No, put that closer to the screen. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We don't discriminate. We don't discriminate. <laughs> he came with his tools, y'all. Just for you tonight. Oh, well, what's that? Hold on a second. Let me pull you up close. Oh, that's tight. Mm -hmm. Wow, do, do a side view for, for us, Lester. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, hold on. Hold on. We, we, we ain't going to discriminate against... The Jesus brother. Wow. So we got silver, copper, gold, and white. Mm. Wow. So that activates melanin. Hey, we ain't got to that yet. 
<laughs> Back up. Don't get yeah, carried away. Yeah. We ain't got to that yet. We ain't, look. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm going to take that camera off the crystal, and I want to show you, family, what I have in the corners that was inspired by Lester years ago, and he just showed me that my corners might be obsolete by now. So, uh, wow. Oh, oh, like we were talking on cell phones back then. Yeah. <laughs> Look, family. Oh, uh, uh, let me, let me, let me. Uh, can y'all see that? Let me, let me, let me. Uh, yes. Full screen. This is inspired by Lester Lovin. You see that triangulation right there? Mm hmm You see the pyramids? I got pyramids. Yes. I got pyramids everywhere. This is what Lester inspired me. And folks don't want to go home. They don't want to go home. <laughs> it's Lester's fault. All right, so let me put the. Uh oh, oh, I did it. Okay. Yeah, you did it. All right. Hold on. Let me uh, go go back. You mean Back to the Future? Back to the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this sounds better with me having the mic off over here after all that trouble. That's why the mic wasn't working. Between that and the medicine, folks don't want to go home. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Huh, huh, oh. huh. Could you first remove remove the, the uh, what do they call that thing? The screwdriver from my eye socket. Oh, no. Let, okay. <laughs> let, let, let. <laughs> hold on. Let me go full screen on this one. Go ahead, brother. Okay. I have been overly polite in terms of listening to people talking about going home. Oh, I want to, I must go, if I was just home for a second, if I could just, if I could possibly sample home, maybe, maybe I could tolerate this toxic environment. Okay, so we got to go with what y'all are fond of calling the white scientists on this one. Because they measured a particular part of the brain and they were able to correspond this part of the brain with what the Kim might call the ba. Ooh. And loosely and roughly translated, um, we sort of interpret that as meaning the soul, but not in a Christian sense, in the sense that everything started off as one consciousness and then separated in order to learn and eventually will be reunited with that, that one consciousness in a big Yahoo celebration. But when the individual bar pieces separated off from the one mass bar, it wasn't gonna leave any of us hanging. It put a tracking device in each and every bar. And that is in the brain, not the mind, it's in the physical brain. And that tracking device samples home one Billion times a second. So when we complain about wanting to go home, we are home one billion times a second. We just have to stop drinking the NyQuil so we can remember that. So that when folks be saying, oh, I want to go back to Africa. You hear that, folks? Talking about you want to go back to Africa? Say that again, Lester, please. I'm, I'm saying that our eternity itself, one billion times a second, and therefore the collective of everything we've learned as souls. Yeah. And also there's this, there's this funny thing called, oh yeah, Hank, my student. Oh my God, the no zone. What's the, what? <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Listen, I, I, I had to turn this around because one camera ain't enough for Lester. I, 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 look, 
if you're going to be a pirate, put on your eye patch. Okay? <laughs> what I mean by that is, if you gangster, then go all the way gangster. Mm. What is the no zone when it comes to light? Come on, you new age people. What is the no zone? The no zone is every time light in, in, encounters another light particle or light wave, it does not pass through it. Hmm. You, you follow me? Yes. They sort of make this agreement to sort of go around each other, but it makes this sort of bubble, which is called the null zone. Oh, wow. And in the null zone, everything that that one light beam has learned in its entire journey is infused into that zone. And everything that that other light wave has learned is infused in that zone. And in that, in that micro, micro, micro minute, we learn everything that they've all learned. That sounds like light tantra. Don't it, Miss Bliss? It does. Oh, that's deep, y'all. We can have tantra through light therapy. And remember, visible light is only 3% of the universe. Uh, we got 97% that is non-visible light. Mm. It's still light. We are free. Our, our eyeballs, or more specifically, the cones and rods, don't vibrate that quickly. Mm. Unless we've done some of that ayahuasca root. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, okay. uh, no, no. You claim you claim to know about crystals, bro. All right, and this is not, not, not. You, you done dipped into it. All right. Let's okay. Go All let's, let's go, go there. there. Let's okay. go there. Let's go there. Okay. So. Now we don't, you know, we don't board up some of this ancient tree stuff. Uh oh. And we don't put it into the proper concoction notion. Uh oh. Uh oh. This sound like this sound like a chess move you're doing to me, bro. Of course it is. Okay. And now whoever's whoever's the guy that's told us to consume this, right? And they say, well, you know, you know, stuff might come out. And that could be emotional stuff. Oh, shit. Get ready. Here that, it comes. That could be psychic stuff. Hmm. And that could be some basic um, funk. Mm. I, I'm being. You're being polite. No, I'm going to stay here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Okay. But now we've consumed this this stuff, and in order for it to allow us to let go of our preconceived um, notions, <laughs> the doo doo chases. Okay. What happens in the brain when we consume the ayahuasca notion? Mm. Mm. This involves crystals. What happens in the brain when the ayahuasca juice goes up there? Liz, you want to take that? <laughs> she said no. <laughs> well, she likes her foot. She ain't standing. She ain't stepping on that landmine. Come on. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is what happens. Okay. The juice, and I say the juice or the bark of the tree, which is ancient, because it's got that lineage, right? It's, it's done seen a whole bunch of stuff, right? Uh -huh. And so that juice says, "Well, where can I go? What bar can I go to and hang out and talk to someone that understands what I say?" Hmm. And suddenly there's a neon flashing light and it says, hey, come over here. We got plenty of seats. And he goes inside and there's a whole bunch of people in this bar. And they're all sitting, they're all sitting at the bar stools. And there's only one bar stool empty. And obviously that's for bro ayahuasca. Okay. And he sits down and he starts to have a conversation with the person next to him. And the person next to him looks remarkably like Ron Boy Calcite. Oh, shit. I said this is a crystal answer. Okay. 
rhomboid calcite, uh, you know, this is a square, but when you do these angles on the side, yeah, yeah, that's a rhomboid. And mm -hmm. there's many, many members of the calcite family that grow in rhomboids. And so the ayahuasca starts talking to the first person at the bar. And as soon as that calcite picks up on the frequency of the ayahuasca, then it literally starts to oscillate at that exact frequency. So you're saying psychedelics is crystal therapy. I'm saying, I'm saying in the case of the specifically the ayahuasca, that mm -hmm. is crystal therapy because the brother doesn't have to, the ayahuasca didn't have to talk to the second piece of rhomboid. As soon as the first one vibrates, then the second one starts to vibrate. The and then as soon as all of them are vibrating, forget what you ever knew. Oh, <laughs> shit. Did you hear that, Bliss? Wow. Oh, you, better put, pump, you better punch the likes up tonight. <laughs> next level. Star Trek ain't got nothing on less than love is messy. Damn it, Jim, I'm a vegan, not a lacto ovo vegetarian. <laughs> Yo, the crystal. Yo, he just blew out the crystal. <laughs> <laughs> the crystals just blew out. <laughs> oh, that is too crazy. You saw it. It just went blank. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's popping back. Yeah. It's back on now. Oh. Reset. You gotta get the other one back on. Oh. So we're we're we only we're only halfway through this front. Come on, we 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 got the whole. You know, we're an opening act. We don't come back. We get no more. We get no encore. Come on, we got to get this done. Okay. So, like all things in the tessellated world, of course we knew that there was a great accumulation of the stuff we didn't want in the upper corners. Okay. But we also had to consider, finally, is there any function to rounding off the lower corners? Hmm. And that's why I'm here today, because after multi, multi decades, I finally put together what Brother Noor was saying from the book, The Ankh, and what Dr. Dubber Blair was saying in his multiple works. And here's the answer. In terms of the bottom corners, we must convince all that static energy, all that static electricity. Meaning, since we're inside, we're not getting the natural voltage that goes from the ground to the atmosphere. So we've got to convince, we've got to convince that stuff to come inside of our homes. And the way we do that is by rounding off the bottom corners with what Dr. Blair would call uh, either a diode oh. or a circuit. And in, in this particular case, we're talking uh, about a parallel circuit. So I'll break each of those down. You know, I never thought to look at City Hall. I never thought to look at the bottom of the corners of the room. I never thought to look, so I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. This is deep. Well, they, they used to have these things at, uh, in, in the 18th and 19th centuries called um, uh, oh, I think they were called dust busters. And they were little tiny um, metal squares that they put in the stairs so that the dust wouldn't collect in the corners. Oh, shoot. And, you, and if you look, at, Hank, I studied City Hall. They have the stuff. It used to go like it. It, it curves in, you know, it curves that way and that way. Mm -hmm. But they used to have stuff that would literally curve, so it wouldn't go straight down. It would curve. Wow. And it was it was it was done in mo it, um, the tiles and mosaic. Wow. wow. No, no, they no. Somebody knew what. what they Somebody were. knew some yeah. architectural yeah. Of sorcery. Yes. Well, sorcery. No, well, no, look, all architects are sorcerers in the mm. sense that you're conjuring up either a positive or negative energy field. A special shout out to Ross Ben. Yeah, of course. You know, the brother's been hitting it hard. For, so, oh, and, and Lester, I want to put up the uh, video that Miss Bliss did so nicely for your show tonight. Yes. Family, 
This is a uh, this is a video production by Miss Bliss. Thank you again, Miss Bliss, for that. Uh, that was almost psychedelic, man, making me think about this rotating crystal <laughs> table right here. So, yeah, last it was most appropriate. It was it, it incorporated everything that I was uh, uh, wanted to say. Thank you. Okay, so I got a question: Is melanin also a form of crystal? Um, well, first of all, melanin is a, is a, the organic semiconductor that's in the body. So it would have to be crystalline in structure, but we're not quite there yet. Okay, we're okay. not. We we haven't we haven't passed the threshold. Um. Well, okay. All right. Damn it, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to redefine how I define threshold. <laughs> okay. Here here's the deal. Alignment. The answer deals with the idea of alignment in the same way that I'm trying to address the static electricity in, you know, because because that, that, that that's a that's an ocean of energy that's just sitting there waiting to be used. Mm. Okay. I'm not inventing it. I don't have to have any byproducts, there's no pollution. If I just can have this to move, it's to my benefit. Mm. Um, at the same time, uh oh, that sounds like your phone, right? It sounds like my phone. Let me see if it's Obama or the commissioner. All right, okay. Um, I'm just moving, family. I'm just moving no, the camera. Hold on. Hello, this is this is a real moment. Yes, this is this is amazing. I better have your pens and papers it, ready. This, Albert, it's. What's the name of what's the name of your um I'll send it to him. Yeah, okay. I'll send it to him. He's sending okay. it to you. Focusing back on Lester. <laughs> okay. The uh, well, I have several things for us to discuss, first of all. Tell him you live. I'm sorry? Tell him you on radio now. You, this is a live broadcast. Yeah, he knows that. He just needs to know your 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 where how to reach. I'll send it to him now. Okay. Does he want to be on the show or he wants? No, to he just he just, just want to hear it. Yeah. Okay. I'll send him the link. Mm -hmm. Okay. the The point is, <clears throat> is that melanin. Uh, consists in the skin. If you do not have melanin in your body, you are called deceased. Mm. Meaning that some people believe that people that have white skin have no melanin. You need melanin to be alive. Carbon-based life form. And who among us has the most who among us on the planet has the most melanin? Be careful, y'all. That's a trick question. Uh, I, well, then give me a trick answer. Oh! <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, take, 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 take a grenade, a uh, foot exploding guess, bro. Is it sea creatures? Oh, you, you, you going off human? Oh, excuse me. I don't know. Man. Well, most people assume. Most people assume that you know if you blue black, you got the most melanin. Huh. 
okay? But I'm sorry to tell you, we are the minority as far as life forms on this planet. Mm. There's more bacteria and fungi in a backyard than all the niggers that have been born. <laughs> okay, all right. So my point is, is that, and you're all familiar with this syndrome. You just, I just didn't recognize it at first, okay? The animal that has the most melanin per body, you know, body weight and whatnot, mm -hmm. is the duck. Ooh. Wow. Okay, now come on. Now, you acted like you're surprised. We walked down in Chinatown and in front of the window of every restaurant that's down there, what do they have? Ducks. The duck. And who was the duck served to? Emperor. Oh. It's called Peking duck, ain't it? Yes, it's Peking okay. duck. A father of crumbs here, people. Okay, <laughs> we gonna get father back. I mean, okay. I mean, like Hansel and Gretel. They were supposed to follow the crumbs to get back home. Yeah, follow yeah. the crumbs. You saw how that worked out. Oh, well, you know. all right. My my point my point being that the melanin and the melatonin. And that's why I'm that's why I'm giving credit to Brother Noor and his book, The Ankh, Electromagnetic um, History in, in from Kimmet, is the fact that no matter how much melanin we have, the melanin needs an electromagnetic field in order to link them all together. As soon as they're all linked together, then transmission is instantaneous. Remember in the matrix, when after much, um, after much uh, drama, Neo and, oh, what's the woman's name? Trinity. Trinity. Mm -hmm. Neo and Trinity are in the helicopter. Yeah. Yes. And he turns to her and says, do you know how to operate this thing? And she turns to him and says, not yet. Mm -hmm. And what happens? Three seconds later, download. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I'm saying about melanin. You need the electro, you need that electromagnetic field to organize the melanin. And then it mm -hmm. becomes a radio antenna and trans, you know, transmitting and Mm -hmm. receiving and transmitting it's the organizing of it and mm -hmm. that's why that's why we need the bottom things for the, for the corners for the corners, corners okay got you now there's a way that we design that but before we get to that we got to get to the more basic thing okay which is so far we, we're dealing with maintenance and damage control you know mm. how do I how do I defeat all these positive irons that are in my house? Okay, but we need a basic means of generating negative ions. Okay, and simple God, Goddess, the Divine, the Void, whatever you want to call it or don't call it, provided us with the most simplistic, and yet beautifully complex thing that is to say i get my water yeah i get my container i, I wanted to have it you know a you want some water i got some water no right no, no no i i get my i get my water yeah y'all better drink water for him because he's speeding up our chocolate <laughs> okay and um it was it was 10 years, no, it was 12, no, it was 12 years. It was 12 years that I had been studying negative and positive ionization. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm looking at all these different machines and as they say, various devices, you know, various devices and, and whatever. Mm -hmm. And suddenly the knowledge came to me that if I, Well, let's just pretend that this is a uh, 12 or 16 ounce container of water. You want a cup of water? 
in a strip. I, I want it. I want a cup, like a like a glass cup. That yeah, 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 like that. All right, here we go. Here we go. Hold on, family. Lex is going to demonstrate something. How much water do you want? Uh, all of it. But I'll <laughs> but I'll be I'll be polite and say to the top of the <laughs> uh, no, all of it, bro. Oh man. <laughs> Get that out of my ear. Fill her up. <laughs> oh, so let me give you a small. You want? Do you want a big, a small cup? No, no. I you want, want that, that big I one. I want the big one, Jim. Yo, Yo it do the work. Fill that cup up. Fill it up. <laughs> You're taking all my water. <laughs> you know when they called the doctor on Star Trek Bones? Why? Because back in the day, they didn't have anesthesia. And so the oh, doctor was shit. at the opera and cut your leg off, and they were called sawbones. Oh shit! Did y'all hear that? That's about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're bones. Okay, okay. So give me a little crystal, not the not the big ass one. You get just a little crystal. Of a course, little, I'm looking for a little. What? I, I'm sorry, I'm asking. Well, you hey. got a little crystal? No, no. You no. <laughs> Come on, bro. You one. must have some. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I know. I got a green tumble. That's little. Or you want something small? I, I want. Okay. Well, oh, well, well, oh. How about this one? No, you need smaller. I got clunky crystals, but I gotta find a small one. Uh, give me Fun, a second. Funky, funky, bushy. Come on, bro. I'll, I'll find it, bro. I'll find one. I'll find one for you. A regular crystal. Well, I didn't even say regular, just, just. I got one. Oh, you know what? You know what? Let me go find one. I'll be right back. Go ahead and talk to them while I find the crystal. Okay. <laughs> go talk to them. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, something like that. I don't know. We making this up, family. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Uh, I, I, I bet you if I, just give me a second. I bet you I can find something. <laughs> oh. I should snap that right off your glass. Hank. I got one. Okay, he, he's got one. It's a live thing. Yeah. Oh, see, that was so difficult. Okay. <laughs> Already, fam, as, as Hank always says. Um, imagine my chagrin. I've been studying um, the generation of negative ions and the provision of positive ions for 12 years. And of course, I'm looking at all these various machines. I, you know, I saved up to get the, the machines. And in terms of energizing our rooms, even the best negative ion generated will only energize one room. So if I'm doing like Hank's house, I'd have to have six of these devices, and they cost between six, you know, four and six hundred dollars a piece. The point being that after 12 years, miraculously, one day, the covenant, Jehovah, the universe brought me the knowledge that if I take a, a regular quartz crystal, it didn't matter how big it was, it didn't have to be perfect, it didn't have to be, you know, it didn't have to be clear, it could be cloudy, it could be the stuff I pick up on the ground that's quartz. If I just drop this into this water, just like that, okay? And I wait. It's gonna change the water. After 24 hours, the negative ions that I'm looking for will come out six inches on all sides of this container. Oh, man, okay. After two days, it'll be two feet or one foot across. And after three days, it'll be three feet or one and a half feet all around. That was the beginning of the understanding, okay? That I could generate my own negative ions using water and a quartz crystal. Hmm. Of course, the universe was like, we're not done with you, son. You need the next phase. And the next phase was the fact that there's this thing called dissociation. And dissociation is just a scientific term for the fact that water, or what we know as H2O, dissociates 
or breaks up into positive ions, and then it comes back together. Hmm. And once again, wa the water molecules break apart and come back together one billion times a second. Hmm. Wow. I'm going to repeat that. It's H2O. And by the way, I'd be lying to you if I said this H2O because there's no such thing as H2O. But I mean, it's much more complicated than that. But the H2O separates into OH and HH. Okay. And then it comes back into H2O. And it does that one billion times in one second. Mm -hmm. The only reason why our water is polluted is because we put in the pollutants faster than the dissociation can break the, the toxins up. Mm -hmm. So if I put my quartz crystal into the water and I wrap it and specifically, I don't just wrap it. I coil it with copper wire. Hold on, let me put you full, full, full screen. Hold on. Go ahead. Lift up a little higher. Coiling means that each piece is directly next to the other piece. And mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look nice. But the book said, if I coil it seven or more times, that will speed up the rate of dissociation in the water. Yeah. Yeah. And that means that by coiling this copper, I mean this quartz crystal and placing it into the water, I'm going faster than one billion times a second. Yeah. And therefore, that excess energy is now raiding it out from the bottle. And so instead of going three feet after three days, we can now go five or six feet. Mm. And so we're generating a, a bigger field of negative ions. Mm. Mm. So what I put into the water, so what I'm saying is the most important part of this, of this system is not the triangles up in the corner. Mm. They are converting what we don't need. We need to generate more of what we do need. Mm. And therefore, putting this, you know, putting a rat crystal into the container allows us to generate more negative ions. That was not good enough, bro. Mm. Because as fast as I came up with one system, then they came up with one G. Mm. And then I came up with a more sufficient, and they came up with two G. And then now it's up to 6G. They already launched the satellites for 6G. I didn't know that. Oh, they, they, gotta, they have to launch 5,000 at a time. I'm going to repeat that. They launch 5,000 of the satellites at a time. And they spread out. Or, or they, it's, it's a coordinated thing. It takes a while. Mm -hmm. But they already launched. You know, 6G is, you know, people are oh, what are we going to do with 5G? I'm like, Nick, bro, you better start. You better <laughs> You better start counting higher than that. Wow. Okay, now, okay. Worries? Uh, no. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, no matter how many bottles I had in each room, that was a lot of bottles. That was a lot of crystals. People didn't want to change the water, keeping track of when it was. It's, it's a logical thing. You see the you, Yo, you see, you see this. The cat is doing it needs the less than stuff. Totally like yeah, yeah. Bliss, my cat is like all over Lester. <laughs> Look at this. Here we go. He all up in the crystal stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, he, he's sitting right he's by sitting it. right by he's the crystal right, in that, the water. That's right. He knows. They all know. Now, see, your cat, your cat is a perfect example of what I'm talking about because they know how to insulate themselves from positive ions. So they don't worry about it. They can sit over the most positive ion thing and they, their, their fur, they mastered that years, millions of years ago. Okay, let me get back to the point here. Okay. The point that the universe is making is 
as we say, biomimicry. How does the earth generate her own negative ions over the positive ions? Oh, let's see. Well, we've got this thing. Putting up higher. Yep, right there. That's the, that's the that's the world. That's the world we live in. You have a marker anywhere, bro? Um, I have a one of them pink highlighted. Oh, you better give me something darker than that, bro. Um, oh no, maybe we'll try it out. Okay, let me, there we go. Let me see. Yo, keep the lights up, family. You ain't gonna find it anywhere else. Oh, I don't know. CIA headquarters. You know. That's about it. The Bolshevik, you know, Moscow, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but later for that. Later for that. Okay. Basically, what I'm trying to illustrate here. Oh, let me go for a Hmm. Go. Okay. What I'm trying to illustrate with those pink lines yes. is that we have latitude and longitude. Even if we don't know what that means exactly, we've all heard those terms. You know, one is the, the, the lines that go across, the others are the lines that go up and down. And this is where the new age comes in. Because people are always talking to me about the Taurus field of the earth. Mm -hmm. The Taurus field of the earth. Okay. So what are we actually talking about when we talk about the Taurus field of the earth? Let me let me get you let me get your little your, your little pink pen back. Okay. Here we have. Oh, you got a dog pen. I, I, I need. We can see it. We can see it. Okay. Here yeah. we have. Here we have our planet. Mm -hmm. And here we have energy moving. Right. Okay. Now, why is that energy moving? Yeah. Why is that energy moving? What What forms the Taurus field? I'm asking a question. You asking me? Yeah. I got Eminem fuck in my mouth. Um, I'm sorry, but that's not the answer. Uh, okay. <laughs> the Taurus field is formed whirlpool. Well. You sure you sure you don't have a darker pen somewhere? We can see it. No. But um no no I, I, I need, don't have a regular pen. I, I need the dark side, bro. I'm gonna try to I need some itty bitty dark side. I need some dark dark vader, okay? Um this is a family, Miss Bliss. Yes, uh, you look for a pen. We're gonna have a workshop at Nicholas Bookstore, 1396, and um Lester wants to do it in about a month. Mm -hmm. He's going to teach you how to triangulate. How to, how to make your own. Make your own triangles to activate your melanin, your purse, your wallet, and your entire life. Mm -hmm. uh, only one? <laughs> <laughs> you got, let me look for a pen. <laughs> oh, I got a blue one. He's got a... He's got a blue one, Jim. Oh, hold on a second. If I can take it apart. Yeah, blue is close. Blue, blue is good. Yes. Okay. I didn't get a chance to get dinner yet. So I'm uh, eating my little bit of munchies. That I'm finding laying around in the, in the lab. Okay. A uh, little, little. Yeah, Rebecca, we're going to have an online option to uh, have it on video. 
We're not gonna leave you in the blind. So there will be video um, so that you can get straight uh, a ruler, a cut like a straight edge razor, some hot glue. He's gonna show you how to do all this. So right now, I don't know what he's. Uh, okay, when I'm trying to, when I'm when I'm. Uh, let me go full screen. Hmm. What I'm illustrating is uh, right here, this is the zone that we live in. We live in the troposphere. Okay. Okay. And then we have the mesosphere, and uh, th this is the exosphere. Um, the ionosphere is between these things. That's the atmosphere itself. And, and all seven of these levels is called the atmosphere combined that's the atmosphere okay and the point is when we deal with the atmosphere uh -huh. the toroidal field Put the cap back on. Yeah. The toroidal field. Yeah. You know, everyone says to me, oh, the toroidal field goes around the earth. Okay. But the toroidal field could not move unless you had the poloidal field. Hmm. And what is the poloidal field? What? That's not an answer. Unless you want to try it, because I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> the word poloidal comes from pole. Mm. Oh. In other words, in other words, in order for the torus field, the electrons to move, you must first establish a magnetic or poloidal field. You got a magnet right here, by the way. High power. So the point is, is that you need two magnets or two magnetic poles mm -hmm. that will form the poloidal field. And once the poloidal field is formed, then the electrons of the toroidal field will move. The so that sounds like a generator. No, the list, it, 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 what, <laughs> what kind of generator, son? What's the specific name for that kind of generator? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Well, you still got two more chances. Okay. The point is, the point is that you've got to have a magnetic field in order for other stuff to move. The magnetic field does not move. I'm going to repeat that. The magnetic field goes around, but it does not travel from top to bottom or bottom to It is not moving. Okay. So. What do we call that kind of field in physics, or not even physics, in, in electronics, when we've got one field that's the dominant field <coughs> and allows the other field? I don't know, from a bipolar field? Bipolar. <laughs> You might as well say I'm schizophrenic, bro. That's it. Is I'm just saying. I'm just saying these are not the appropriate terms. Okay, huh. the appropriate term is when I when remember I started out half an hour ago ranting and saying how does the Earth generate her own negative ions? Okay, and that's because she first makes a poloidal field. Right. And then that allows the excess electrons to move within that polar field. And, mm. and my, my, as I, as, as they say on TV, as I present to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, what is the name when we combine those two things together? And the name of that is called a condenser. Oh. Hmm. So, in other words, what we're what we're mimicking is looking at the earth and saying you first make a magnetic field and then do another 
process, you make this uh, Toronto field that allows energy to move through. So there's a wonderful, wonderful book out there called Flatland. And it was written over a hundred years ago. And the man talks about living in a one dimensional world. And so for him, two dimensions was like a mind blowing thing. And he was talking about the possibility of a three dimensional world. And what he was saying in the book, what he was trying to let us know is if you live in a two dimensional world, <coughs> and you encounter the three dimensional world, you will only be able to see it from two dimensions. So you're you only see the slice of it. You can't see the whole. You can't perceive the whole thing. So I'm doing the reverse of that. I'm saying that if I'm making this poloidal field, and then I'm making this uh, toroidal field. That's a three-dimensional matrix. Mm. But what happens if I want to condense that into 2D? Mm. I'm sorry, bro. I'm not going to even penalize you. I'm going to show you what we came up with here in the lab. <laughs> Family, we might have to do two shows. What do you think, Liz? I think so. But you know what I wanted to say? Um, you know, sometimes when we're in the mountains, Yes. And you're taking the Wachuma medicine. Yes. People see something that's like an what they would say is like a, a grid or an electrical grid. That's right. And it's it's lit up. So it sounds like that's what you're talking about. Well, I, well we it just it when we take the medicine. It just so happens. I, I, what, what, let, let's see what let's see what the physical evidence tells us, Jim. Okay. <laughs> I just happen to have this little thing right here. What's that, Lester? Hold on, second. let's go full screen. Hold on, family. We're going full screen with this. Bam. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, <laughs> remember, the clue to it all is we have to think three-dimensionally. <laughs> And therefore, if I'm thinking three-dimensionally, then the toroidal field would be inside of the poloidal field. Mm. Anybody following me? Yes. Say it again. E e even if you ain't, just say amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> what I'm saying is the, the toroidal field, the thing that everybody in the New Age is so fond of, that only goes off so far. Whereas the poroidal field goes out like five times farther than the, the royal field. Mm -hmm. So what we're seeing here is the poroidal field. But underneath that, you notice that this is on top of this white. So underneath that, this is what it looked like. Yes. Yes, that's it. That's what we see. Yes. Oh no, I didn't do any of the bark. Oh no, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just read about it in Disney World, and I thought I'd I'd take a shot at approximating it. Now, let's go back to this one for a moment, just for as they say, shits and giggles. Okay, what do we notice about this particular thing? We notice. And, and this is, we're going straight to the OJ trial. We notice up here, <laughs> we notice that this is copper colored. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we notice down here, Mr. Hank, what color might that be? I don't know, bro. What you did? What did you do to that bottle? I didn't do anything. What color is this? Are these red here? white. No, not the white, the stripes. What, what? It looks goldish. It's brass. Oh. And this is to acknowledge that I'm sorry, I'm apologizing for actually looking in a book versus channeling from the Malchizedek order of uh, the Syrian Galactic Squad that the Earth is a double Taurus. Oh. And therefore, it's a different energy movement from the top to the bottom. Can I get a whoop whoop? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just talking about homework here. 
you know? So therefore, therefore, when we look at this, what this, oh, oh, no, no, what this is, I'm going to break it down. What this is, remember I said the Taurus field goes out like this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the colloidal field envelops that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, to go back to the book I was quoting, Flatland, okay? It talks about going from one dimension to two dimensions and then the belief or possibility of three dimensions. What I'm saying is if I take the three-dimensional format of the Taurus field inside of the colloidal field and I go back to two dimensions, that's what it looks like. Huh. So this is how the Earth generates her own negative ions. So if I put this, come on, Hank, fist bump. Right on, bro. Right if I on. if I mimic what the Earth is doing, then this will generate the proper response. And guess what? Unlike when I put the regular crystal into the bottle and I don't have this matrix on it, the negative ions cannot go to the wall. But because this is the toroidal polaroidal relationship. Oh, this mm -hmm. goes right to the wall and goes right to that TV signal, that computer signal, that the fluorescent light signal says, oh no, push back, OG. Mm. Oh, no, you are not the king of this court. Come on. Are, are, you, are they gonna learn that at the workshop? Oh, they no, no. Learn is when they put it up in their house. They're gonna they're gonna they're going to make the stuff that is going to teach them. To... <coughs> yes, of course they're going to learn all that. I, I'm yeah. too long-winded not to give people everything that I've learned. Come on now. All right. Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. Oh, no, but we're not done yet. I know we ain't. Uh, oh, just so y'all know, hey, Miss Bliss, this is the second Taurus we've had in a week. We got a third one coming. And tomorrow's another another Taurus. This is Taurus season. No, the, <laughs> this is Taurus season, that, brother. Look, it's it's all Earth as far as we're concerned. Oh, you know? okay. And my moon is in Taurus. Oh, okay. Wow. So, Lester, for someone who's listening to the show now, mm -hmm. what's a simple thing they can do to get rid of those negative cooties in the corners until they get to the workshop? Okay. Well, it, it, it's very basic. You cut out one triangle for each upper and lower corner. You glue them in. And I don't recommend that you have to open ones like you do. Okay. Um, and there's there's reason for that. But, gotcha. Okay, but it, it, we're talking simple, right? Right, simple. And then just get, just get several old glass bottles. <coughs> By old, I mean they could be Snapple yeah. bottles, in you know, soda bottles you see off the street. When there's tons of quartz, even on the street. Yeah. I, I've done stuff yeah. here where I've walked outside and pulled, you know, yeah. it's round. It's rounded off by nature, but it's still quartz. Right. Okay. And you place that in each bottle. Or if you know if you if you, if you go on, you know, if you go on a trip and you get a, a whole bunch of crystals, the more of those rounded off crystals you put in the bottle, the more ions are going to spread out. So you fill the bottle up with the rounded off crystals. Yes. And then fill it up with the water. Yeah. Yo. No. You don't even have to fill it all the way up. I'm just saying that if you put one in there, it will generate a field that's mm -hmm. you know three feet after three days. So it doesn't it doesn't mean that you're ionizing your whole place. But the the main thing is. If you put those triangles up there, you're preventing the negative, the positive ions from accumulating in those areas. Okay. Well, that can't happen. Yeah, yo, that is, now that's a fist bump. Damn. Damn. So, so I have a question. Um, if someone. Oh, oh, wanted... oh, wait, 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 wait. Star Trek. Um, something on the edge of, of uh, something on the edge of reality. When he says, long before you're. Long before your wait, how does it work? Take your time. Take your time. Long before your planet was born and your race of men existed, I have awaited a question. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so if someone wanted to take the water with the crystal yep. and put it underneath their bed. 
would it be the same result? Because now they're sleeping, the body is relaxed. So it's not the same as if they're in movement. It's, it, it, I'm not quite sure what you asked me, but it, it's, the, it's the amount of time that the crystal has been in the water to generate the field. Mm -hmm. And uh, the proximity of having the bottle underneath the bed would be good because mm -hmm. that's something that you one would need. And especially if the bed has springs or coils in it, oh. because most coils are going clockwise and taking energy out of the body. Wow. And I called all the major bed bed people to, <coughs> to specifically ask them how they generated their coils. So, okay. and, and um, negative ion would be good, but also you want to put a piece of copper, copper wire, just like I did with the wrapping. Mm -hmm. You want to take a piece of copper and start off at any point on the mattress, but you staple or, or pay, uh, not paste, um, tape the copper foil the copper wire and you go all the way around the mattress mm -hmm. until you come back to the original piece mm -hmm. but you don't unite it you either have it go above or below and then you tape that okay Ooh, loop, creating a loop and that yeah and that will neutralize any harmful effect of your springs on your bed but having the you can't we cannot get enough negative ions in this environment so the way the mattresses are made today yeah. speeds up here, speeds up aging then. Absolutely. Did you hear that? Yeah, and then sometimes people can't sleep at night. So I wonder oh. if that has anything. Oh, it has a lot to do with it. Mm. It has a look, all of it, all look, it's all it's a it's it's a combo sandwich. If you know what I mean. It I you know it's a combination, it, each one would have an effect. But the overlap of all of this is almost insurmountable for people until they uh, until they become aware of their consciousness. Oh, that is real deep. So our beds are killing us. I see. Once again, as a scientist, I can't say that alone is enough. Right. What about the microwaves hitting that box spring mattress? That's Jack. Jack. <laughs> Uh, once again, my exuberant uh, follower. Okay, I would, I would give more. I would, I would credit more the sugar in the Twinkies and in the cereals is killing us than the box mm -hmm. spring in the the springs in the in the in the mattress. Mm -hmm. Okay, because. That is a longer term effect. Hmm. Question for the people who's listening to this show. What material can they use to triangulate the corners? Can okay. they use cardboard? Okay. The, the answer, the answer to the I love I, okay. Can, <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Let me pull you full screen, brother. You gotta catch these expressions, y'all. He lives in a magical world. Go ahead, brother. It's the world. Okay. Um, I was going, Ooh. okay. Um, the, the, the scientific answer is, okay, there's two different levels to the answer. The, the first level is um, the more homogeneous the material, and the word homogeneous means the same throughout. Okay. The more homogeneous the material uh, the stronger the effect. Oh. So it doesn't, so in other words, cardboard right. is not homogeneous. It it's has homogeneous. gaps in it. Yeah. Right. But putting it up there will go a long way to us converting the stuff. Okay. <coughs> and, <clears throat> and what I mean by that yeah. is... Here's a spit jar. I don't need a spit jar. I need some... I need, need some water? I need something to, you know, clear my throat. Okay, hold on. Here's some, here's some water. Okay, but the, the point I'm making is is that uh, uh, we, we always want to encourage people to move, to act. Right. Okay, 
So if you're going to cut out cardboard, cardboard is a, a great first step. Cardboard is great. It will work. Got it. Um, you know, if you want to spend the money to get wood, um, wood would also be good. Now, see, once again, of course, people are economically minded versus health minded. So people are going to say, I'll, I'll just get the cheapest wood, which is plywood. But the, that's not a homogeneous wood. You know what I'm thinking, Lester? This is, I never thought of this before. Family, a acacia plate from Amazon and put the round acacia plate, hot glue it into the corners. I'm just, Bam! I, I'm just saying that there's different levels of homogeneity, okay? And they all work. Got it. They all work. Cardboard, um, I, you know, I put um, joint compound in my cardboard. Oh, 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 y'all heard that? No, did you catch that? Listen, there was a sister, Bliss, family. Yeah. There was a sister who used, um, she mixed a, a, a paste, like yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pop, like a, um, what do you call that stuff? A poly, a poly, um, you know the stuff that hardens up when you mix the two of them? Oh, yeah, polyamorous. Po yeah, polyamorous. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, that mixed up hard when you... <laughs> epoxy, she mixed up epoxy, right. mixed in some sage, right. and then pasted it in the corner with a prayer. And she said the energy was incredible. So you take in pop, um, the paste and then add sage to it. Brad! You got to chill and stay focused on the message. <laughs> you getting cross-eyed, Brad. Tone it down. Yeah. Now, family, we're talking about using epoxy compound compressed and placed into the corner with a prayer, sacred geometry, and then let it harden. So that you no longer have uh, triangulated corners. You got that? Yep. We're talking about geometric sorcery, family. We're talking about geometric sorcery. Learning how to have self empowerment, activate your chakras, activate your melanin, and allow yourself access to deeper trans states. And Brad, you got to remember, you are God. So if you see Luke 17, 21, brothers, in this year, the kingdom of beauty and magic is in your heart. And if you can't see inside by the distraction on the outside, you get yourself some dark ass sunglasses. <laughs> so stay focused and keep your eyes on the prize. So, um, so did you say you use plaster or epoxy, either one? Or well, oh, go ahead, Lester. He's back. We're waiting for you, bro. Okay. Take your time. Take your time. It takes a moment. Just flip them around. Just flip it. Okay. Yeah. 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 The other way. Turn it around. You know, pass it to my show. There you go, like this. Okay. Oh. Yeah. You got it. All right, hold on, family. Okay. Um, w once again, each of these things, um, in terms of, oh, shoot, in terms of negative and positive ionization. Don't worry about it. That's why everything's elevated. Okay. Um, you can use plaster. You can use all of these things. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, what I'm saying is if you use these uh, more artificial substances, then you need to put those triangles or whatever you're working on in a pyramid while it's dry. Okay. Because um, they're not the healthiest of things. In, in other words, if, if I had a choice between cutting out just cardboard things or filling it with uh, plaster, for the average person, plaster, cardboard, just average cardboard is enough. Because once again, that's converting the positive into negatives. Your, your, your negative ion generator is the main thing that we need to focus on. And uh, oh, 
And I see someone says, does it have to be in a triangle? That's that's the question I wanted to address. Oh, okay. And not so much what the material is. Um, you know, when we look at materials, uh, a, be, a, a simpler way to answer you is when we look at materials and materialization, it's not so much how homogeneous it is. That's the scientific explanation. But it's it's does the material allow water to be absorbed and released and so Ooh. and so therefore we wouldn't want to use plastic even though plastic is a homogeneous thing but it doesn't allow water to be absorbed and released because that's that's the cycle of negative ions you know water goes into one stage but it comes out into another stage okay so um but okay uh, um what about placing salt in the corners uh Listen, I'm talking about changing the shape of the corner. Okay, putting salt in the in the corners is is a thousands of years old tradition, um, and that also has to do with the material that the building structures were made of. Those things were made of, um, you know, the clay-like structures, adobe, um, and mud, and all that. That worked. The salt worked much better with that than the stuff we're talking about. Um, all these things are nuanced. You know, these, this is not, this is this is an investigation, meaning that even though science says one thing, you know, I've tried materials that should not work, but they work better than what science regularly said. Now I'm gonna address, I'm gonna address the triangular thing for a second. Okay. One of the things I'm always battling about with my friends and my colleagues is the fact that um, there's a tremendous amount of information about water out there. And there's a tremendous more information about water that needs to be done. And one of the things is, is that water exists as ring molecules. You ever heard that, Hank? Concentric rings. That's only what, what, do you, what do you mean concentric ring? Like when you throw a rock into a pond and it ripples. No, I'm talking about the fact that within any structure of water, whether it's, whether it's um, a liquid, or a solid like ice um, or hot water, okay? We have a, we have three ring water molecules, four ring water molecules, five ring water molecules, and six ring water molecules. So if you just picture a triangle, a square, a pentagon, and a hexagon, uh -huh. each of those, each a water molecule is made up of a tetrahedron. So a three ring water molecule would be a triangle that has each of those three tetrahedrons on it. Wow, like what's behind you, look. Yeah, okay, <laughs> now, now, when we look at, like for example, in my book, Rocks and Minerals, okay, and there's at least 12 different versions of a field guide to rocks and minerals. Mm. But no matter what they say in the back, they all start with the same basic information, how the stuff is formed, how chemical reactions happen, okay? And, oh, oh yeah, what the hell am I talking about? I'm talking about this is the three ring water molecule. Oh. See the three ring now. Of course, you have to always. I always have to question science because they call this a ring. That's crazy to call that a ring. How are you gonna call a square a four ring molecule? That's what they do. Yo, hold, hold that's how they so roll. See it again. Put that up to the screen. Yo, family, look at this. This is crazy geometry in a good way. This wow. is this is the most basic three ring water molecule. Wow. And the, and there's three ring, four ring, five ring, six, depending on the temperature of the water. There's different ratios of each of the rings. Are you following me so far? Yeah. Can I also test that? Uh, I don't oh, hold know. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. Keep it right there. Keep it right there. I'm going to do my arm lift. Yeah, it works. Families generating energy. So what if we put one of those in the corners? I'm trying to get to the major blunt point that I came here to do. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So 
when it comes to the actual g g g g generation, <laughs> okay, we look, we have to ask ourselves, uh, oh, oh. oh, yeah, that's it. Long before you. Long before your race was born and your planet existed. Mm. I asked a question. Okay. And the question before us is of the three ring, and you know that's a circus. The four ring, that's a joke. Come on, yeah, that's funny. Okay, the five ring, you know, like Super Bowl basketball. Okay, and the six ring, which which one of those ring molecules has the most energy? I don't know, man. Uh, you, 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 in in Family Feud, you're allowed to make two wrong guesses. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh man! Three, uh, six. six. Oh my God! They get to answer the question. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> so when we combine the knowledge, we take on the knowledge, snooky, snooky knowledge. Whoop, whoop, uh, we want to have a triangle that blocks off the corner, and at the same time, we know that that six ring molecule is the most energetic of all the water molecules. So if we combine those two things together. Uh-oh. Let me go full screen. Six. Go full screen. So it's six, family. You hear that? It's six. Bam. Oh. Wow. Oh. There's your six ring water molecule wow. in the midst of your triangle. triangle and of course in here in each of these are going to be um the the uh what's the word capacitors oh, that i gotta put your is it okay i put your number on, on the screen oh, yeah. folks are gonna reach out to you for this oh my number oh yeah oh yeah uh, i got your number memorized no no my number is one i'm the lester one that's all the number you need oh! okay <laughs> just like you're the Miss Bliss one, and he's the Hank <laughs> one. It's all one. See, he don't need no shrooms, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hold on. I'm still going to put that. I, I, look, I don't know what you're talking about. I not only did more drugs than all of y'all, I did stronger ones. Ooh. Okay, so take my eye patch off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Come okay. on, listen. Now, it ain't about the drugs. It's about the conviction and the compassion of finding out who you are. Yes. Yes. And, you know, lots of people do that in church. So I got a question for the audience, Lester. Uh-huh. Do you uh, make uh, or do you make these for people? Make what for people? Um, those six-sided triangles. I make everything for people. It depends the every. Everyone will call me, and the first thing they say is, well, how much does it cost? I'm like, no, slow your roll. How many triangles, how many corners you have, how many this, what's your lifestyle? But each space is individual. And what we learn is if we take even, even these rectangular shapes, because everyone's told me, oh, it's negative. Everything has a positive expression. Okay. I, I'm going to say that again. Everything has a positive expression. People come to me sometimes and they say, Well, this crystal, it just it just gets rid of everything. It just gets rid of you know, all of, you know. I'm like, so then that's your that's your garbage crystal. It gets rid of stuff. Mm. Everything has a positive expression. Okay, so <clears throat> something like this. Um I make them, but not most living situations or most living environments don't need anything like this. This is, well, if you live above, say, a copying store or a dry cleaners, you need this. Can I feel that, Lester? Well, it's not completed, but yes, of course. All right, family, I'm going to, uh, for all you who are into pranic healing, I'm going to tell you what I feel from this. I'm going to hold it in my hand and um, 
I actually feel the energy field, Lester. Mm -hmm. it's, it's generating an energy field. Wow, in all directions. So it's extending from about Damn it, Jim. three feet <laughs> in each direction. Mm -hmm. This is tight, bro. I guess to have me one of these. No, this <laughs> nice. Uh, no, no, they, they come in. They come in fours, bro. Okay. Okay, family. It comes in fours. This is his contact info to have yours made for you. This is this is that's high tech, man. And can you wear that on your chest? Hey, listen. Those of you who are into uh, amulets, you can ima imagine making that for the shape of an amulet, Lester. Oh, shit. Okay. Here we have. Y'all saw, saw that? <laughs> Yo, this is. I'm going to get busy. Snacks, <laughs> snacks level? Come on now, bro. All right. Hold on. This Wow. Okay, now I want to show you. Oh, Lester, before you go there, family, that's what superheroes wore on their belt. Mm -hmm. Even Wonder Woman had something looking like that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, now I want to show you this. Let's see. Okay, hold on. Go full screen. We're going full screen. Go. I look like lightning. Well, it looks like lightning. Well, up here, that's the point at which the cosmic and solar energy enters into our atmosphere. Oh. And at that moment, it is in one form of energetics. Okay. And then those little bolts that you saw going separating out, as it goes through and interacts with different things, it separates into, so it takes one primal energy and creates a whole bunch. And by the time it hits the ground, because it, it goes to the ground, yeah. then we got all the energy we need. Wow. Okay. And therefore, um, that is the definition of a condenser. Wow. It takes energy and either steps it up or steps it down, but it makes it more usable. Wow. And so when we have the bottle, that's called a bio condenser because that's what the earth uses to get. And so when we put the triangles up in our corners and in the bottom corners and we have our thing, that is doing that exact thing you saw in the picture. The energy that comes in, separates out, separates out, and therefore makes oh. even more energy. Now, so, no, 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 no. Let me let me find out the final part of the ahead, ahead. the final part of the rap. Okay. Um, we go to school and we learn, we hear, we repeatedly learn. You know, they say they say it two, they say it two different ways. They say, well. Newton's second law of thermodynamics, you know, and, and one way they explain it is everything goes from order to chaos. Or the other way they say it is, you know, I start off with a certain amount of energy and in using that energy, some of it's lost. Okay. I don't get the, if I put 10 gallons of gas in my car, I get eight gallons worth of energy. Some of it's lost. Okay. And that's, that's, that's the second law of thermodynamics. Okay. Okay. So according to the second law of thermodynamics, the stuff I'm talking about should not work. Hmm. It shouldn't, it cannot perform that way. But then I was hit by the Egypt. <laughs> okay. Okay. The, hit by the Egypt. Egypt. Okay. And they said, now hold on, Slim. What you're talking about is the fact that there are two divisions of energy systems. Mm. There's the active energy system, and that's the one we know. I put the gasoline in the car, I turn on the car, some of the some of the gas comes out of the exhaust. Right. Some of it evaporates. Right. You know, the friction of the tires, if I'm on a different medium, it'll take more gas. Right. 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 Okay. But then there's passive energy systems. Hmm. And past your energy systems mean you don't have any moving parts, but you might have atomic or subatomic or that kind of moving part. And like a crystal? No, not like a crystal, my friend. A crystal. Hmm. Oh! And therefore, in a passive energy system, it can let off more energy than it takes in. Oh. Did you hear what I said? 
in a passive energy system, it will naturally let off more than it takes in. And that's our explanation that we're collecting energy, we're, ja we're gathering, or, you know, in the, ca in the case of this, why do I keep emphasizing, you know, the atmosphere and all this? Because the atmospheric gradient, that electrical co co potential, as the earth is moving, that potential changes. It squeezes down on the atmosphere and it changes the voltage constantly. That's how organite works. Mm. The atmospheric gradient is pressing on the organite. Mm. That's powerful, bro. And therefore, we can take advantage of these principles. Okay? I'm the person, everybody will tell you, he talks a lot, but he's trying to, he's not just telling you how it works. Because if you if you just reproduce what I'm saying, you're not growing. If you have the principles, then you can expand on your own, mm. which is what is meant to be. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm not reverend. I watch the birds and the beavers. They tell me that. Mm. Reverend nature. That's right. In, anywho, my friends, um, I hope you've gotten a taste of my flavor. Yes. Um, this is how I've been motivated all my life. It's not some mental educational thing. You know, I, you know, people say, oh, you've read a lot. And I'm like, no. When I was in the Colorado River, measuring the speed of the water, and we were pouring dye into the water and taking samples to see how, how far down the water had to move in order to break up the dye that we could no longer measure it in the water. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I, like I said, I was in the Colorados, the, in the Rockies. And as soon as that sun went behind that mountain, it did not go down. It was still daylight. But there was no longer sunlight hitting that water. And within two or three minutes, that water was moving faster. It was colder. Oh, yeah. And Memories the, are coming back and now. And the dye broke up way farther upstream mm. because the water's moving faster. It's turning, mm. you know, it had the ability to heal itself. And that was a mm. tremendous learning moment for me. That yeah. whereas we humans look at it and go, oh, it's just move, water moving. No, there's all kinds of other circumstances. Yeah. And temperature was a big one. Now, also, I had two, I had two mind blowing without any drugs experience that time. And the second one was when we walked up the river. Now, I, I'm naturally a cold person, meaning if, unless it's 80 degrees, I got a sweater on. I, I just, oh, I, no, nah, cold. Okay. And I'm walking in this water, knee deep, and I'm not complaining. I'm walking. And finally, we get to the waterfall. And it's about an 80 foot drop. Huh. And so it's all mist. And normally I'd be like, oh, and I'm too mystified by the fact that I'm watching these rocks come from the bottom and float up, and they're about this big. And they're, they're about two inches above the water. Wow. And that's because the water is so energetic that it created the anti-gravity anti oh, function. Oh, shoot. And the next time, I thought I was crazy until I read Victor Schauberger, and he was talking about in his youth, he saw the exact same thing. Oh, that's deep. Oh, and, that's that, real deep. and that's a natural property. We're talking about levitation. That, okay. You you have, let's see. It, it was always so fascinating to me that in everything that I read about these Chemites, not only did they describe things thousands of years before our scientists even knew they existed, mm -hmm. they described them better. And the one, the two, I noticed two things about the Chemite reading. And one of them is, in all the 40 fucking years I've been reading, not once have they mentioned gravity. Mm -hmm. What's up with that? Draw your own conclusion. I mean, conclusion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. <laughs> hit me with your rhythm stick. Hit me, hit me, hit me. All right, okay. all right. The, 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 the point I'm making is I immediately went to the meaning area. Now, you've been to my classes. You know that when I was a kid, you know, my teacher said, go to the dictionary. I said, I know how to pronounce it. I want to know the meaning. So I immediately renamed it the meaning area. Okay. And I went to the meaning area and I looked up the word gravity. And the word gravity comes from the word grave 
So then I had to go to the thesaurus and looked up what's the antithesis of gravity. And they said levity. Levity is anti-gravity and it's also humor. Ooh, so that's why you feel happy. Of course, life. it breaks it up. It breaks it up. Wow. We gotta have you back, brother. We uh, gotta have you back. Please. I would I would prefer that you have me forward, but that's okay. Yeah, we okay. okay. <laughs> we gotta have you in the near future. Oh, Family. oh, that's oh wait, wait. That's now. <laughs> and he ain't had no food. <laughs> huh? I I haven't done any more mushrooms. I don't think you need to. And I haven't done any less either. So there you go. Okay. <laughs> um, before we wrap it up, I want to uh, I want to post the video. Uh, Bliss, you sent me the video for tomorrow, right? Uh, yeah, I did. Okay, I can send it to you me, again. Uh, make sure. Let me pull that up and um, make sure. Family, we're going to, it's going to be amazing tomorrow too. This is this is a magical start of spring. Magical. Yeah, uh, of course. Lester, we you you said they could start with cardboard. Yeah. And as far as the water, could they use pebbles from outside to fill up the jar and add water? You really only need, I mean, the pebbles work if you just have one, like, small coarse crystal like I showed you. Not not this big job, but, you know, that'll work. If you wrap it with, co with copper wire, that's way more effective than just putting the pebbles in. But but okay. if, you, if, if, if you have nothing but the pebbles, the pebbles will work. Okay. Okay. All right, family, I'm getting ready to. Uh... And that's, and I'm sorry, but that's why I want to have this workshop so I can show people all the permutations oh. and how, and how literally to get started. Well, we're going to make this happen. Mm -hmm. We're going to make this happen. But I got to uh, transform. Okay, let me see if there's a good question. Robots in uh, this, guys. <laughs> let me see. I want to thank everybody for being so gracious and, and, and pushing the like button. I want to thank all the different people listening to, from all over the world. Um, if you haven't already, punch it in. Uh, well, to all my also to all my peeps that that particularly tuned in, thank you so very much. And um, uh, this is a, a, a warning to you that I'm coming out with all new stuff, or not all new, but new and improved. So yeah, I believe it. We're ready. I believe it, bro. Yeah, and uh, you got full support here. Mahalo. Mahalo, mahalo. <laughs> or as, as we say, mahalo back, y'all. Mahalo back. <laughs> All right. Uh, hold on. Let me just make sure that I get this. You know, I'm going to tell you, family, since I've been, Lester came in the house, my electronics have gone wacko. And uh, they, I, they just can't help. They just can't have the load, bro. This is This, this is like. Cray cray, really. This is really crazy. So, hold on a second. I mean, it's crazy. You know, bags disappeared. Stuff that has teleported. Bliss. Stuff has yes. teleported out of the apartment. <laughs> there you go. Listen. It, I mean, it teleported. No, it really did. But, um, it, you know, um, I. You know, I, 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 I'd have to say this, and that is when I first, in my first month of studying pyramids, I went to the bookstore and I got what at the time was considered the authoritative book on the, the pyramids of Egypt. It's called Pyramids of Egypt by I.E.S. Edwards. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading through the book, and he's, you know, he starts, he literally starts with the book. The first sentence says, the pyramids were used for burial, and, you know, the, the and he didn't say it this way, but the next 120 pages is going to prove that. Mm. And then he proceeds to spout his theories and what, whatnot. But at the very back of the book, he had a list of the pyramids that still exist in Egypt today. Um, there was at least five times as many pyramids as we see now. Wow. But the thing that was fascinating about the list 
is that he named each of the pyramids. He gave the dimensions of each of them. And then he gave the name of each of them. The name of each of them. And so some would be like, you know, we welcome Ra on Horizon or, you know, you know, uh, in the case of the Bent Pyramid, and I always thought it was rather funny and retarded that, you know, the Western scientists said, we doubt, we, we doubt if they actually intended to have this angle. Like, you know, it starts at one angle that goes to another angle. And they're like, it must have been a mistake. But the name of that pyramid, the name of the chemist gave that pyramid is the Temple of the Two Harmonies. Mm. Excuse me, you didn't pull the screwdriver all the way out my eye socket because that, that describes exactly what it is. Okay, and so when it comes to what they call the Great Pyramid or the Pyramid of Giza, mm -hmm. the name of that pyramid, what's the name of that pyramid, Hank? I don't know, brother. The House of Loving. Mm. Oh, Merkut, House of Love. You know okay. who first told me about that? No. Samaj. Mm -hmm. Yep. Special shout out to Haru Ra of course. Samaj. Of course. Yep, he was the first one to tell me about that. So I'm sorry, but I don't remember going into any cemeteries or funeral homes where they call it the House of Loving. You know, oh, the yeah. burial series kind of weak on that. <laughs> um, maybe eternal loving. Yeah. You know, like you never die because love never dies. All right, Lester, we're going to put this. This is tomorrow's show. And Miss Bliss, thank you for this. Oh. Thank you again, Miss Bliss, for that uh, beautiful video. Family, I want to thank all of your support and uh, your graciousness. We're going to have Lester Loving here now in the past future. Uh, this is the original Doc. Oh, you mean Doc Brown? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I, as I always say, Marty, we got to go black. Black to the future. <laughs> and with that being said, I want to thank everyone. I want to thank you, Miss Bliss, for holding feminine shocking space. And uh, we're out of here. Family, okay. thank you again yes. for another fantastic. Let me just close out with a nice little thank you for showing up. Nice.